My name is Sahira, and I'm here to teach you the beautiful art of belly dance. Alrighty, folks, we are ready to go. Now you are ready to play your finger symbols. What I'm going to introduce you to in this first video is the basic stroke. This is the stroke that 90% of all finger symbol players play exclusively all the time. This is a very versatile stroke. It is easily heard over music, whether it be recorded or live. It also works well in an acapella setting. It works great for practice, unless you have animals that don't like the sound of finger symbols or neighbors that are a little bit ornery. <laughs> but this basic stroke is gonna get you really far. And I mention this because as you begin your journey, please know this basic stroke will get you through a lot of content and you can play the finger symbols fantastically using only this one stroke. But as we move on in our content, you'll find that in my format, what I love to do is use these like the musical instrument that they are and they can create dozens of different sounds. But to get started and to set you up for maximum success, I'm gonna give you the most versatile, the most common stroke, and this is the one that we are going to use for the majority of our beginning practice. And this stroke is called the basic, because it is the basic, and the one that you need to know to get the furthest with the finger symbols. So let's look at how we are going to set up this stroke. This stroke is a ringing tone, which means you're going to keep your fingers off of the finger symbol, other than the one that's attached by elastic, right? Because you want the symbols to be able to resonate. To create the stroke, you're gonna bring the symbols down on top of each other. You can bring them completely flat so they 100% overlap one another, or the way I learned is to bring it slightly offset. This gives you wiggle room and flexibility because it doesn't have to be a super precise stroke every time. And you might find, depending on the size and shape of your hands and zills, one or the other works better. Play with it, have fun with it. Both are totally feasible options. You're gonna bring your ring or your middle finger down on that on the thumb zill. This is gonna do most of the action. Your thumb zill is a little involved, but the thumb is much slower than our middle finger. So in order to eventually build speed, you're gonna to wanna to focus on the middle finger doing most of the heavy lifting here and the thumb zill being there to receive the stroke from the upper zill. You're gonna bring that finger symbol down, hitting there 90%, 100% on top of the other, and then you're immediately going to open up like you're drawing the ring out of those symbols. So just like this. Yeah, so go ahead and give that a try. Hopefully this is a super pleasant sound to you. I really like this basic stroke. A couple of tips as you play for all of the strokes, but definitely for the basic because this is the one we're gonna use the most often. Think about keeping the entire hand relaxed. So even though we know we have to keep our fingers off the finger symbol in order to, to create that nice resonant ring, watch out for zilling like this. Right, one, because it's mildly distracting, looks like you're at like a heavy metal concert. And when you start to go fast, this is really gonna slow you down because there's tension in your hands. So you wanna relax the hands so that they're nice and relax those fingers, but not setting on top of the finger symbol because of course that's going to then mute your symbol and this is a resonant tone. So relax those fingers, relax those fingers and allow the zil to resonate. So let's go ahead and try that basic tone with the other hand. So same idea, making sure that when you bring the finger symbols in, they naturally connect right on top of each other. Then you're gonna open the hand up right away to draw the sound out of the symbol. Here we go. Excellent, so let's go ahead and try alternating. We're gonna play one hand and then the other. Typically as we play finger symbols, one hand will work and then we'll alternate with the other. Every once in a while we'll play both hands together, but for most patterns to have the versatility that we want, hands are gonna work independently of one another. So let's go ahead and alternate. We're gonna play these, uh, the finger symbol strokes, nice and slow, keeping an even tempo. These will be like quarter notes. So we'll go seven, eight, and go. Let's do four more counts, and two, and two, and one. 
Beautiful. As you play, I invite you to listen to the continuity of your strokes. Listen to the right hand and the left hand and see if they sound similar or they sound different. It's not uncommon that one hand picks up the, the technique much faster than the other. If you're right hand dominant, your right hand might have a nice sonorous tone and your left hand might be a little more clunky. That's okay. Take a note of it, right? And then see what you need to do. Do you need to adjust the finger symbols on the other hand? Are they coming together, you know, not totally on top of each other and getting messy sounds, right? Do you have to look up precision? Do you perhaps, are you muffling the finger symbol with your other hand? This is an opportunity to just take a note of what your body does to be intrigued and interested by it and then to work to make both sides work cleanly together. Once you have that idea in hand, uh, no pun intended, <laughs> let's go ahead and see about moving as we play. I think the nicest way to start moving first is just to think about moving the arms, right? Can we move the arms in circles or arcs or any other movement as we keep those zills going, right? And then once we do that, perhaps we'll like to mark the tempo with our feet. I like to do a little step touch to sort of mark the tempo because that starts to get us used to the idea of creating rhythm with our bodies by marking the tempo while we're creating rhythm with our hands. While both of these are gonna be in the same beat, right? We're gonna be going at the same number of beats per minute. We always want our zil beats per minute to match our body beats per minute. Our body won't necessarily always be doing exactly what our finger symbols are doing. So we wanna train our brain right away to deal with that and to be okay with that. Yeah, so let's go ahead and play again, those basic strokes, alternating hands. I'll take you through a couple of repetitions of arm movements, and then we'll do some body movements. And then if you wanna get crazy, you can do body and arm movements at the same time. Take this to your level of challenge and find what works for you, yeah? So let's go ahead and give this a try. We're going to do a single quarter note, so one on every beat. We'll go five, six, seven, eight. Let's move the arms. Good, let's mark with the body. You can try another movement, perhaps a figure eight. Now try adding the arms if you would like. And bring the arms down. Take the arms back up, keep breathing. and take them down. Three, two, one, and pause. Nicely done. So that Zill Star in the making is the basic stroke that you need to get started with your finger symbol practice. Like I mentioned, so many people utilize only this basic stroke. So if you can get this one under your hip belt, you are set to do a lot of fantastic things with the finger symbols and start your journey towards becoming a better, more proficient finger symbol player. So post below, I wanna know how this is going for you. How do you feel like that, that stroke sounds to you and are you ready to take your Zill skills? To the next level. If you would like to, I invite you to join me for my free finger symbol jumpstart class. You can find it at sahirabellydances.com slash zillstar and it will give you even more information to take your finger symbol playing to the next level. I look forward to seeing you there.